Hello, hello everyone. Reverend Elvia here. And Reverend Peter. Welcome, welcome to October Sunday Morning Grace. And last month our theme was talking about truth and what it is and what it isn't. And so our theme for this month is building a foundation on that truth that, that we pray you have a better understanding of and have really been thinking about and pondering with your angels and your higher self. So. Uh, we're excited to share with you this week about our views on how you can build a more solid foundation on truth and bringing in the ancestral lineage because uh, we all come from some place, of course, the stars, the heavens, but we also have this ancestral lineage that I think we often can forget. And uh, so we're going to be talking a little bit about that, about how to bring in the gifts from that as well as to acknowledge whatever healing that we are perhaps being called to do. Absolutely. And uh, in shamanism, there's there's many lineages. There's the, mm. there's the bloodline, which is, you know, our grandparents and our great-grandparents, etc. Um, but there's also uh, what they call the milk line, which is people that have nourished us. Um, so I know for me, um, the Mayan elders are part of my milk line, that I've got this heritage. So I think we talk about ancestral heritage it's not necessarily just the specific um, bloodline um, that there are other other things that you inherit um, as part of as part of being here that's really beautiful I don't think I knew that I love it yeah I, w I wish I could remember there's like there's four different lines I think that they talk about in shamanism but those are those two are very important obviously yeah yeah so there's two sides to this coin, as I mentioned. There's the, the gifts that we're here to um, really leverage and to, I keep hearing harvest, and of course it's this time of year. Um, so leveraging, harvesting those gifts, and then there's, again, acknowledging the healing. So we're gonna talk about the gifts first. Um, and so go for it, honey. All right, well, and actually this setting is perfect for- I was thinking that, we didn't <laughs> intend this, but. It's perfect for that story. Um, uh, Elvie had a gathering last night of um, lovely, lovely goddesses um, in an outdoor circle here. And, and we do this, um, I do a shaman circle here. Um, and people often comment about, you know, oh, what a great place you have. And it's been very conscious for me when someone says that, for me to make the point that this is not my place. I don't look at it as my place. I look at it as I'm the caretaker. Um, the, the land is its own spirit. And uh, I don't want to put this ownership on it. And so in this context of ancestral, uh, we were talking about this morning, and part of my heritage is uh, my great-grandfather um, came from Sweden to Nebraska. And started a farm and settled the farm and really back in those days this is the 1850s 1860s uh, the farmers were very much caretakers of the land um, I think that changed over time uh, with modern chemicals and modern farming um, maybe kind of lost some of that some of that value of caretaking um, or it changed anyway but anyway I see that, like with this place, that I've, I've inherited that gift to be a caretaker. I'm not, I'm not a great gardener, so in terms of, of growing, growing crops or whatever, but I do feel like I've become, from living here for almost 30 years now, that I've become much more in tune of the responsibility as well as the communication uh, with the land spirits and what they want, not just what I want yeah that's huge yeah so you've inherited that from from your from your lineage i have and they still have that farm in nebraska don't they um that's that's a good question i <laughs> we've kind of lost touch with that branch of the family mm -hmm. um so i'm not sure i think they were going to sell it last i heard a few years back but um but on our side actually my parents bought 160 acres of woodlands in southern indiana that I ha actually ended up managing the taxes and, and such. Um, so again, 
Christmas um, tree farm. It was. It was a Christmas tree farm at one point, but essentially I've inherited um, the role and responsibility to sort of oversee the property from all my siblings. So well, when we when we give and respect the land that we are stewards of, <clears throat> excuse me, it, it gives back to us everything that we need. It does. Yeah. And I love it. Just one little PS to that is that he doesn't even cut down a tree or a branch without asking permission from the land spirits. So it's really about um, being in communion with them constantly. Of course it has its drawbacks. I've been fighting to get into our garage because the butterfly bushes have taken <laughs> over the pathway. <laughs> I have That's to true. duck and go under. I did get permission to cut a few that were just I I wouldn't have been able to get there, but uh, yeah, <clears> it's good. a it's a negotiation. <laughs> yeah, so um, gift from my side of the family. I learned after I became an ordained minister um, with James Twyman, a minister of spiritual peacemaking, and obviously we've we've gone on to do to do more things with Divine Order of the Sacred Rose, but. Um, I learned after I'd been on that, taken that journey, that, that, that fork in the road, so to speak, um, that apparently my grandfather on my father's side was the first one not to be a minister uh, for many, many generations. They'd all attended Yale Divinity School and um, were, were preachers in their own right or, or ministers in their own right. Um, so to realize that that's in my blood and my mother's maiden name is Parsons uh, <laughs> and uh, the heritage uh, connected one of the lines connected to the Mayflower is uh, Reverend William Brewster so there's this um, which is one of my names one of my many many <laughs> names um, but there's this connection to ministering and um, and on that, the, you know, the Mayflower note, there's this, I mean, and there's there's a lot of mixed around the Mayflower, but what I love to hold on to is this idea of, of really standing strong for what you believe in and making whatever choices you feel like you have to, to stand up for what you believe in and helping people um, who feel a similar heart, really. So um, I garner a lot of strength from that. Very much so. Which can also bring in the healing side of things, which is not where I'm going to go with, with my sharing on the healing thing. I'll let Peter talk first, but um, you know, it, it could easily be argued that the whole um, Mayflower lineage, that there's healing that needs to be done. There's, there's um, a lot to embrace with how we, how we entered into this country and how we um, how we dealt with things and I'm not going to go into that now but I'm sure that you can get the sense so what would you say is uh, is a good example of something that you feel like you're heal here to heal on behalf of your your lineage um, well my uncle Theron told me a story years ago about a few generations back when they came over from England or Ireland and one of the Roe brothers had this idea or this burning desire that um, he wanted to go out and kill a, an Indian or a Native American. Um, you know, it was pretty Wild West then, and he did so, and... Oh, he did? He did, and the Indians somehow let the family know that they were, they were going to come for him, and... The, the br other brothers were so appalled that they they actually didn't defend him. They stepped back and they and, were appalled at his choice. At his choice, yeah, they were appalled at his choice, and and so the Indians killed him. Um, wow. So from that story, I have a sense of um, responsibility for that. That you know, even though maybe karmically there was karmic payback in that lifetime. Um, you know that that's still a healing that our family carries that and and how I see it is what I can do is just to make sure that whatever what, whatever that feeling was that 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 person had the hatred or um, 
racism or whatever that feeling was is that I can do everything in my power to break that down, to not harbor feelings like that and to do my best to help promote um, acceptance and compassion and you know all the things that would be offsetting for that experience. That's a little love right here. Human design speak. Yeah, so, um, you know, the story that, that I've been guided to share is, um, I guess, a different flavor of discrimination. And, you know, it's interesting that these are, for both of us, the, the story that we were are guided to share just, like, came immediately. So there's, like, like, no conversation with the angels. It's just this is what it needs to be. And the theme is so much about... Um, about compassion and acceptance and love for everybody, you know, and my mother, who was born in 29, 1929, uh, lived through the Great Depression, the Second World War, and her brother was uh, in the Navy, and she had this hatred for Japanese people. And I remember being uh, in the car on the way home from school one day and she referred to, I can't remember, we were, I was with my brothers, um, and she, she referred to the Japanese as the Yippanese and she said it with this disdain, this disgust, and I can't, I just remember it now and I was probably seven at the time and it just was jarring and shocking. Um, that this venom really was was coming out of her and um, you know I one of my brothers I think said something I don't I don't believe I I don't remember saying anything but I remember one of my my brothers saying something like what you know and <laughs> beautiful part of the healing and I think it's um, that may actually be healed in our lineage I pray because our children our daughter became obsessed with Japanese anime when she was like eight maybe even younger and so she wanted to go to Japan and we put her off until she was at 14 and she's been there probably I don't know a dozen times at this point she's now 30 um, and our son went over with her uh, one time and he met the love of his life and they are married so we now have See, we're both getting teary-eyed because we love her so much. Well, and, and I think we both feel that their marriage actually is a representation of the healing. I mean, there were yeah. a lot. There's a lot of people probably in the United States, and there's probably a lot of people in Japan that, uh, because of the war, had had hatred for the other side, and we really feel like their marriage is is a beautiful step in potentially healing Just eliminating the idea of sides yeah and healing yeah very much so yeah and I mean our son did experience has experienced some discrimination when he's been over in Japan and um, you know as a white American male he's he's not exactly viewed favorably by a lot but he is the first person to hug her parents, Ayumi's parents, and every time he sees them, they hug. And uh, they even hugged us. They even her. hugged us when they were here for the wedding. And and, and our daughter-in-law, he never hugs. He ne <laughs> right? But, yeah. So yeah, I think it's um, healing going on. Beautiful, beautiful karmic healing. I think that that's happened there. So, um, you know, the invitation. I'm still a little bit teary because she's just such a beautiful soul. And you you think back, it's like how and last PS here for this one is that uh, my mother met her and they had this beautiful, I mean, didn't speak much English at that point, but they had this beautiful exchange over my mother's teddy bear at the time. She uh, had pretty advanced dementia and was really like a little girl and uh, they just really hit it off and it, it felt like, I don't know, completion. A healing. Yeah, very much so. So the invitation for you guys is to, you know, really look back through your history and what are you carrying forward? What are the gifts that you bring to the world and how can you leverage those maybe a bit more, harvest them a bit more? Uh, and then also, you know, what is it that you're being 
called to heal? You know, what is it that you can do to um, bring that healing to the family, the family lineage? Absolutely, absolutely. And even with the, you know, I've talked about this um, land caretaker role that I have, but as I focus on it more, it, it kind of goes to a deeper level. So I think it's, it's very healthy to contemplate those gifts that you have um, because as you're more aware of them, I think you can, you can take them deeper, you can more, more embody them um, and own them. Mm-hmm. And ultimately that's becoming a, a, times agree. a more core truth of who you are. One times agree. And I think that's true with the healing too, because you know, honestly, I don't know that that karma with the the Japanese lineage is, is like checked off. I think yep. it's a skill set that can then be applied to wherever there may be um, that tendency of discrimination or, or, or judgment. Or separation. Separation, yeah. So I'm realizing you must have the cards over there because I don't have them over here. I'm gonna pick a card for you now, and and uh, oh, that's your card. I don't want to give that one away. This is a brand spanking new deck to me. It is the Soulful Woman Guidance Cards by Shus. I can't pronounce it. I'm not even gonna try. Shushan? But I'll show you. I'll show you, and then you can look it up. <laughs> it's beautiful. I really love these, and actually, some of the images. Show them the image that you of the card you got, because we just finished this painting your Earth Angel self project, or working on it. And this is a very similar style to some of the paintings that have come forward with that. All right, so this is the card for today. Is dun, 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 dun. this one? Yep. Yep. Surrendering. Wow. Okay, so um, you may or may not know that we are smack dab in the middle of a nine-day tapping to ease surrender event over in Angels Teach Land, um, doing EFT to work through those obstacles to surrender and just being able to live in that space of surrendering. So that's <laughs> this is just perfect. Um, And the words here are, I honor the truth and surrender as it opens me to the gifts of divine grace. And just look at the beauty in that image. She's so lovely. And there's a lot of sacred knowledge within this. And the the message I get from that, the sacred imagery here with the wings of Isis and the third eye and the Ankh and the, the star there. And there's just, there's a lot of imagery in this. And how I read that is that, uh, you know, as we surrender, we actually gain a- access to ancient wisdom, ancient knowledge. And when we're in that space of fighting, we don't have access to it. It's as simple as that. So surrendering really empowers us. Absolutely. So are we ready for the tenet of the day? I believe we are. And the tenet of the day is I serve. A loving heart. Up, up. There we go. Oops. May look backwards for you. But it doesn't, though. Oh, it doesn't? No. <laughs> oh, just for us. It's backwards. Just for us. I serve with a loving heart. It speaks to my cross of service, baby. Mine, too. So, anything else you feel guided to share before we. I feel complete. Awesome sauce. Me, too beautiful how these leaves are coming down as we do this. So just settle into your body and you can either say these, we're going to recite the 12 tenets, you can either say them along with us or just listen and allow them like medicine to go wherever within you they are needed most right now. I I open open my my heart with with deep gratitude and intend today to master my spiritual mental, mental, emotional, emotional, and and physical physical energies. I am dedicated to my spiritual practice. I surrender to my soul's purpose through sacred prayer. I own my guidance. I live in partnership with my angels. I serve with a loving heart. 
I am compassionate in every moment. I trust it's all good. I allow immediate forgiveness. I honor my truth. I listen to the spiritual messages within my physical body. I express myself creatively. I am one with Mother Earth, and so it is. Blessings, blessings, blessings to each and every one of you. Love, love, love. We love you. Be well. Happy October. <laughs>